Pleased to be joined by Bax' assistant coach, Carter Cochran, following a 6-5 overtime loss for the Bax against the Vipers. Storming all the way back, though, from a 5-1 deficit in the third period. Carts, uh, maybe the best way to ask this is, how would you describe this game? It's a great question. Um, interesting. Um, you know, I think it's really a game that's broken up into three parts. Like, you look at the first minutes of the game and it told one story and then the last 10 minutes of the, th uh, the second period there and then the third period was it's there was almost three completely different games there and I think you kind of saw a few different sides of our group here and um, you know luckily we showed some really good ones too I, I thought that we did a really good job uh, being ready to start the game that was a huge emphasis for us after um, what felt like a slow start against Westgate the other night um, guys did a really good job showing up ready to play and um, you know, I thought that they pushed back in the second, like you're, you expect any good team to do after you kind of take it to them a little bit for the first period. And, um, you know, I thought we did a good job at first of managing that pushback. And then, uh, you know, they get that first one and it kind of sat us back onto our heels a bit and maybe shook our group and uh, just felt like we couldn't really get out of the, we kind of had the wheels spinning there and, you know, they score four goals in five minutes and you kind of feel like the game's over at that point when they kind of get rolling like that. But the, uh, there's a huge credit to our group and especially our leadership group. Uh, they really took control of the room in the second period intermission and had some choice things to say about our performance and what we needed to do and how we were going to be able to get back into the game. And um, again, it's easy to say those things and it's easy to have all the right things to say when a team comes out and, you know, you get down 5-1 after a short, after a power play goal, they scored at the beginning of the third. A lot of those words are hard to follow up on after something like that happens, but it's a huge credit to our group and the resiliency they showed and uh, the effort they had to get that game tied up. And, uh, you know, it would definitely at 5-1, you probably aren't sitting here thinking, wow, these guys deserve a win, but to get all the way to 5-5, I think we deserved a better fate tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, quickly, I just want to uh, kind of hone in on on the them scoring quickly a few goals, because we'll get that out of the way. Just. Kind of what happened, I guess. I mean, it's just over five minutes when they score four goals, and and they were they were different goals. But can you kind of explain? Was it just a lull from you guys? But what kind of happened there? Yeah. So I mean, I think that they kind of get the they get that first one there. They get the two quick ones, and once they got that second one, I think that we started to chase the game a little bit. So it felt like I think our guys were you know saying the right things. They knew we'd been in the situations before. This is now three games in a row we've scored the first goal. Um, do that one goal wasn't going to be enough and with the scoring luck we haven't had in the past I think that they just started to try to cheat the game a little bit in in a good way like trying to create offense trying to put the pressure in trying to just you know get that second goal we haven't been able to score a second goal yet this year and um you know they were really just pushing hard and it just left as a mental mistakes where we got on the wrong side of the puck we you know kept pucks in but tried to be cute with them instead of just putting them back uh down below the goal line and uh, you know, Vernon, I mean, it doesn't, I don't know how many times it needs to be said. They're structured, they're disciplined, they're patient, and they're opportunistic. And when we play our style of game, we don't give up those chances, but we went away from it very quickly there to try to push the pace of the game. And we saw what happens. And again, like I said, that was kind of the main message of our leadership group was like, this isn't good enough. Here are the things that we have to change. And I mean, top to bottom, those guys led us all the way in the third period. So let's talk about that third period in a little more detail. Um, where, so take me through the comeback, I guess, is the is the first thing. How did it begin? <laughs> well, I mean, it just starts with your power play. I mean, we've talked about it a lot here where we know what type of a group we have offensively. It, it's deep, um, but it's not a lot of like guys that are just high-end offensive only type players. We, we built our team to have a lot of really good responsible two-way players that um, you know, I don't think they're limited offensively, but it's just a, a type of a group that uh, needs everyone contributing to score and the power play is their best opportunity to be able to do that. And, um, it just comes first with just a really nice play from Sully over to Dak there and a great shot from him who just continues to find ways. I felt like he showed a little bit more of being a 17 year old tonight and that how difficult it is to be a top guy in this league every single night, but to his credit, you walk away from a game saying, oh, I don't know if he played his best and he has two goals. Like that, that's when you really know you're starting to turn a corner with a guy and you're starting to see that maturity and development into, hey, I'm not just a good player in this league. Like I'm ready to be someone who can take over games and be that type of player. And we have a lot of 
high hopes for Noah now and in the future, but you know, that was kind of a really good indictment of that. And then, I mean, we could talk about this guy. It's an early game. So if you want to be here long, we can just start talking about Daniel Panetta now. Um, I got nothing, I got all the time in the world for him and I couldn't have been happier for a guy like that who one of the most vocal guys in our dressing room after that second period and just backed it up with every word he said with his play and, you know, just willed that one in, just gets that puck down low and just stuffs it and it's just a huge momentum boost for us and that was our third power play goal of the night and um, just kind of really made you look up at the scoreboard and realize we're right here, we're in it. and. Uh, that fourth goal, again, just hard four check by Matt Bourgeau there, gets in on it, creates a loose puck, panties in the right spots, getting up in the play, being aggressive, and cashes on it. And then sometimes you just you hit a post and the puck pops right under your stick and you get a goal there. So it was obviously great to get it tied up like that late, but you know it was a great comeback for our guys. And like I said, I think they deserved a better result in overtime. Uh, was there anyone else? Obviously, Serdakny and Panetta with the goals uh, definitely stood out. Uh, what else about this group? Were there any individual performances uh, that you'd like to highlight from today's game? Yeah, there's there's two guys that get a lot of uh, attention and credit. And uh, just because of the, their veteran guys, they play huge roles for us. But Kieran Roshinsky and Hunter Sansbury tonight, or, or today, I keep saying tonight, but today, Roosh was outstanding. The first period of the game, when you watch them, uh, the power plays Vernon got, the block shots he had defensively, he was in great positions all night, had a good stick, was physical, was hard to play against. And in a 6-5 OT win, it's it, or an OT loss, sorry, you're not really looking at, uh, you know, a defensive performance like his and thinking that it stands out because we gave up five or six goals against. But, you know, he was a presence all night. He's just been making strides from the beginning of the year till now. And even in these three games, he's taken strides. And, and Sands, like you talk about the effort of our leadership group, he's our captain and, and he is it for a reason. Like I think he played the last, almost the last three minutes of the game, just straight time, no timeouts, a few whistles where an offensive situation and then a defensive situation where we need to make sure it got to overtime. He stayed out there for the last minute after playing two minutes already. And, you know, he's a guy who's put in, a, I think those were so positively for us. So, so lastly, uh, West Kelowna, obviously tomorrow afternoon, different team. Uh, is, given this goal explosion, <laughs> does anything change with the focus? I mean, now you guys have done it. You know you can do it. Does anything change uh, going into tomorrow afternoon's game? No, I think over the last three games now, we've kind of shown the blueprint to our success, and now we just need to find a way to do it for 60 minutes. And um, our last two games, we've given, I'd say, a 53-minute effort in both, and one of them was two quick goals by Westgate to bury us on the two games ago, and then you know, we talked about the four goal explosion by Vernon today. So like we know that we have the talent, the team, the structure, the discipline, all of the above to be uh, the top team in this pod here. And that's our goal right now, even with a slow start. And the great thing about that is that we have the opportunity to get those points back every single game because we're playing the same teams over again. So we know what we have to do to be successful against West Kelowna. And uh, as long as we come out and we execute and we can we find a way to be able to put that full 60 together, I think we're right on the cusp of, thing, of it here. Thanks so much. Thanks.